Good morning, grade 5 A and B. I missed you so much. Here is a questions for revision sheet on the chemical change. I'll put it on the LMS today, inshallah. The first question here is write the scientific term. Remember, we were talking about the physical and chemical changes. Number one, a change that can be observed by measuring or sensing. When we have a piece of paper and we cut it into small pieces, fold it or tear it, it's still the same, it's still a paper. It does not change into another thing. Also, when we are measuring the mass, all of these are physical change. So number one, a change that can be observed by measuring or sensing is physical change. Number two, a change in which one or more substance is formed and are different from the original substance. Suppose that we have a paper and we burn it. It changes into ash, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. Can the ash return back to be a paper? No. Can we burn it again? No. So it is a chemical change. So number two, a change in which one or more substance is formed and are different from original substance is a chemical change. Number three, we have rusting. Number three, rusting. Rusting is an example of what? Remember that rusting will give us another compound, which is completely different from the original one. So number three, rusting is an example of chemical change. Number four, folding and tearing a paper is an example of. We know that when we fold and tear a paper, it's still a paper. So it's an example of physical change. Number five, there are chemicals found on the left side of equation. Remember that when we have an equation, it has two sides. Suppose that we have H2 plus O, it will give us H2O. So H2 and O are on the left side of the equation, they are called reactants. So number five, they are chemical. Chemicals which are found on left side of equation are reactants. Number six, they are chemicals found on the right side of equation. So here the H2O will be products. So number six is products. Number seven, the number of atoms in reactants and products are equal. When we have an equation, we said that the number of atoms has to be equal in reactants and products. We have H2 plus O. It gives us H2O. So in the reactants here, we have two hydrogen and one oxygen. Also in the water, we have two hydrogen and one oxygen. So the number of atoms in reactants and products are equal. That is the law of conservation of mass. Law of conservation of mass. Section two. It's so easy. Its answer is here. Section two state the law of conservation of mass by giving an example. We just said it now in number seven. The law of conservation of mass is the number of atoms in the reactants and the products are equal. But can you give me an example? I know if you are here, a lot of you are going to give me examples. We have here Na plus Cl, sodium plus chlorine, equal NaCl. So we have one atom of sodium and one atom of sodium in the products one chlorine in the reactants and one in the products. So the number of atoms in the reactants and products are equal. We'll go to now to section three. State the signs of chemical change. Who remember the signs of chemical change? Number one, the bubbles. Do you remember when we put baking soda to vinegar in the class? It gives us bubbles. So we have to say bubbles and say that when we add baking soda to vinegar, it gives us bubbles. Number two, change in the color. Remember when we add iodine to the flower and it gives us a blue color. Number three, change in the odor and the taste. Remember guys when we say that if we have a milk and we take the milk and put it in the out of the fridge, what will happen? It changed its odor and it changed its taste. Okay? So we have three signs now. The change in the color, the bubbles, and odor and taste. 
Also, if we have a candle and I light it, what will happen? It gives us heat and light. Heat and light. So now we have five signs of chemical change. Number one, bubbles. Number two, color, odor and taste, light and heat. We'll go now to number four. It's a very nice question and I know that you... State how chemical change related to our biological process. Who remember how the chemical change related to our biological process? Remember number one, photosynthesis. Who can tell me what are, what is the equation of photosynthesis? Plants take what? Hmm. Plants take carbon dioxide. Yes, carbon dioxide from the air, yes, water from the soil and gives us what? Hmm. Glucose and oxygen. So you write for me the equation. Write for me the equation for the photosynthesis. Number two, what about respiration? Do you breathe oxygen or carbon dioxide? Yes, so we take glucose and oxygen and gives us, huh, and gives what? Huh, carbon dioxide and water vapor. We give out carbon dioxide and water vapor. I'll give you the sheet today on the LMS and the equations are written in the sheet. I know section five, you love it, state whether it's physical or chemical change and we did it in the class a lot of times. Number one, sharpening a pencil. Who remember when we sharpen a pencil? Is it still a pencil or it changed to another thing? Yes, so it is a physical change. Number one, sharpening a pencil is a physical change. Number two, hardness. When we have something rough or smooth, does it change the material? No, so it's a physical change. Number three, milk becomes sour. When we put the milk out of the fridge, as we say before, and it change its odor and taste. So it is a chemical change. So number three is a chemical change. Number four, pulled growing on the cheese. When we put also the cheese out of the refrigerator for a long time, we have to turn to green and it has a very bad smell. So the mold growing on the cheese is a chemical change. Number five. Some of you are confusing between number five and number three. The sour taste or a bitter taste, it's a physical change. If we have the salt, it's salty. It does not change. It's a salt. But the milk, when we put it out of the refrigerator, it's changed its taste, okay? So number five, the sour taste or bitter taste or salty taste, it's a physical change. Number six, what do we say about the boiling point? The boiling point, the freezing point, density, mass, weight, and volume, all of these are physical change, super. Number seven, burning a candle. Do you remember when we burn a candle, what will happen? It gives us heat and light. So it is a chemical change. Burning a candle change, chemical change. But can it be a physical change? Yes. If he said melting a candle, if he said melting a candle, it can return to a candle again. Okay? So it is a physical change. It is a physical change. Okay, and that's what we are going to take today until section 5. Tomorrow, we'll start from section 6.